shoot system. That's where we find the locals. That's where you. That's where you find the locals, the grasshopper, the leaf miners themselves. Okay. So there again we have uh, the stem borers. Stem borers. For them, their work is only to go into the stems. For example, the main stock borer. Are you seeing a picture here where my casa is? Yes. Hello, hello. Yes. Have you ever seen such a pest? Yes. All right. So this pest destroys the leaves. And all of us know that the leaves are very essential for photosynthesis to take place. And then we have the fruit eaters. For example, you yourselves, also you, you are pests. Do you believe that? Yes. You are pests? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so you compete with the monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now here we have the birds. These birds, they like eating our fruits, for ex our fruits such as the guavas, you find them on the guava trees. The monkeys, you find them enjoying our bananas, our jackfruit, okay? They become a big problem. And then the number two, classification according to level, level of damage. Shania, read for us, read for us. Major pests, this cause much damage which needs to be controlled like those that attack flowers and fruits which are vital organs. Minor pests. This cause relatively less damage, for example, those that attack branches, which are less vital. Yes. So now here, all of us, we know that there is a damage, which is very major. Major damage, is this, the, this is whereby the most important part is destroyed. For example, if they eat up the leaf, I mean the flower, there is no way we can get seeds. Because you all know that system of the leaf in biology have covered this. You have the flower, the ovules, the ovary, those things. When the flower is destroyed, it means that we shall not be able to have the seeds. So that part is very vital compared to other parts, see, such as the branches. So the pests which, which cause minor damages, they don't need quick response, okay? But those ones which affect the vital parts, the organs, for them, they have to be controlled very, very fast, such that we are able to get something from our crops that we have planted. Okay, is that fine? Yes. Okay, let us look at the next number three. Number three, next classification is classification two according to mode of feeding, in brackets, mouth parts. Okay, so now here, I normally tell my students to be very careful. Don't look at your friend's mouth when we reach this part. Okay. So here, we classify according to piercing, piercing and sucking. These have stylets or the proboscis that they use to pierce the tissue and suck plant sap like the aphids, cotton, stainers, okay? Yes. These are insects which have the potential to pierce and suck the plant sap. The plant sap is that soup which you find inside the plant. When you pierce it, you cause an injury. Then the water comes of it, that, out of it. That is what we call the sap. So here, never, never and never interchange. Some people interchange by saying, sucking and piercing. There is no way you can suck before piercing. You have to first pierce and you suck. And then the next one says, biting and chewing. These have strong mandibles for biting and chewing of plant parts. If you, if for example, where do you fall here? Malcolm. Biting and chewing. And then Shania. Biting and chewing. 
You mean you don't you don't pee as an sack? <laughs> no. Okay. So biting and chewing, the mandibles are very strong. For example, the locusts, the monkeys. Okay. So number four. Malcolm, read for us number four classification to where they attack crops from. Field pests. Yes, attack, please. Field pests attack crops when they are still in the field like rats. Storage pests yes. attack the produce in stores like weevils and bean protein. Yes. So some so these pests are classified according to where they attack crops from. There are those that wait for you to first get it from the get the harvest from the garden and you put in the store and then for them they will enjoy from the store. While there are those that they enjoy while they are still in the garden, the field simply means the garden. For them, they will just wait for you to first plant, then they come and enjoy. Like the squirrels. The squirrels will come and enjoy your groundnuts when they are still in the garden. They will come and eat your beans. The rats enjoy chewing cassava, carrots, and the rest. So the storage pests, for them, they wait for you to first stock for the, the, the produce. For example, the bean weevils. How many of you have seen a bean weevil before? Me. Me. Have you ever eat tested it? Because sometimes they cook it somewhere. Have <laughs> 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 okay. So let's have number five classification according to number of plants attacked. Malcolm, read for us. Hello, hello. Po polypa polypagus pests. These are pests that attack very many crops for, for several, like locusts and American bowworm. Yes. Monop yes. Mono monopagus pests. These yes. pests feed on, on only one crop for survival, like maize weevils, banana weevil, coffee, mealy among, among others. others. Yes. Polyphogus pests, these are pests which attack very many crops for survival. The locust will not forgive your, your maize once defines the grand nuts, it will not forgive. It just destroys each and everything. And then we have the other ones, the monophogus. For them, they, they want only one thing. If they, they want two bananas, they should be given only bananas. They will only attack your maize. They are specific on what they chew. If, if it is coffee, they want only coffee. Is that OK? All right. Yes. So here, let's look at types of pests. Shania, read for us, at least. Insect pests. These are the most successful pests. Reasons why insect. Okay. Full stop. Have you ever asked yourself this question? Why is it that the insect pests? Insects are more than animals. Can you compare the total number of mosquitoes at home than the, to the total number of rats in your home? No. You cannot. These, these insects have made it in life. They are very, very successful. Okay? That's why I find that we have to investigate why are they very successful. That's why we have a heading that says reasons why insects are the most successful pests. And the point number one we have, they have a high rate of reproduction to ensure survival. They produce very fast. They have a high rate of reproduction, meaning for them, they can produce like five, five young ones because they lay eggs. Those eggs can be incubated in the shortest time. And now that drives us to the next point, which says they have a short life cycle, a smart fly, in numbers very fast. For them, gestation period is only two weeks. Two weeks when they have another baby insect. 
But for the animal, it will wait for nine years, wait for months, wait for what, you know, things. For the case of these insects, for them, they have a shortcut. And then we have point number three. Malcolm, read for us number three. Presence of hard cuticle that prevents water loss and protects insects against water chemicals. Okay, maybe a correction. That word is uh, chutiko. 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 Yes. It is that hard part which you find outside the insect. Have you touched the insect? It's not soft. For example, you touch a cockroach. I know some of you <laughs> fear these insects, but you eat and send them. Yes. <laughs> so when you touch them, it feels hard. It helps them not to lose their water from their body. It's just like their skin. And it also protects them from chemicals. When you try spraying the insect, it will hide inside its chutico. Wait for it to finish your spraying, it bounces away. That's how it survives. Next, Shania, read for us the next uh, point. They are small in size, therefore not easily detected by predators. Yes, they are too small in size. You know, an advantage of being small in size is also there. Don't laugh at people or insects which are very tiny. They have survival techniques. For you, there are some places you cannot hide, but for you, you can hide. To run away from predators. Okay? If yeah. you look at, uh, if you look at, for example, let's talk about a grasshopper and a rat. Which one can hide away very fast from a predator? I think a cockroach. Yes, for it, it can hide. Yeah. It can hide. But for this bigger pest, they can easily be detected. And then you just see a person get chasing after a rat to kill it. <laughs> but when the cockroach is hiding under his bed. Okay, next we say, here we are saying that another reason why they are successful, they require little food and produce to produce energy. Okay, they use a little food to produce energy, not like some of you, you eat like 20 kgs and you produce even a, a half tons of energy. For example, you look at the, the way the pig eats. If a pig can eat, you may think it can plow a garden, <laughs> but it, it cannot even plow. So that's why we're saying these insects eat less and produce a lot of energy. That's why they're able to survive. Yeah. And the next point here, Malcolm, you read for us the first one. They have an exoskeleton that protects the inner organs against mechanical damage, maintains a small size, discourages predators from feeding on them. Yes. The exoskeleton, if you touch it, it is very rough. Okay. Yeah. That skeleton has helped it to protect the internal organs. All of us know that its skeleton is in, is outside. Ours is inside. For it, its skeleton is out, which has enabled it to, to hide away from predators. Predators. And also, it maintains its small size. That skeleton yeah. enables it to control the size. Even if it eats so much, it cannot increase in size. It is just that normal size. Next we have, Shania, read for us. They secrete uric acid, which requires little water for excretion, hence preserving water in their bodies. Yes, please. They do what? They secrete uric acid, which requires little water for excretion, meaning they use little water to expel out toxic material from its body. For example, urinating. It will use very little water to produce urine. And it maintains the rest of the water in its body for survival. Yeah. Next, next we have, most of them feed on a wide range of materials. Have you ever imagined, you, you get your beans, you put them in the store, you keep it for one month, you think your store is safe. You can remove the beans out, you find the bean weevils smiling inside the bag. <laughs> okay. You 
going, hey, how do these things survive? I thought even they don't have what to eat. Okay? So now, for them, they can survive even if you have hidden them inside a room where they don't have what to eat. They can decide to just eat even the sack which you have kept them in because they eat everything. They can start chewing your timber. Okay? An example is the rats. The rats don't mind. For them, they don't care because they know they can survive even in hard situations. Yeah. So let us have the next one. Shania, read for us the next one. They are easily adaptable to the changing conditions like they have like they have lived on Earth. Yes. They have, on this have Earth. survived. They have survived on Earth. Year after year. Because when it is rainy season, for them they can survive. Dry season, they can survive. Whether you spray them, they will survive. Because they have a changing mechanism and ability to adopt the hard situations. Okay? So sometimes, I think some of you may, may assume if God could help you to be like these insects. Because for them, they have made it in life. In hard situations, they are there. In the what they are there. So let's have the next point. It says, they have a defensive mechanism. Like sting, spikes and their legs have fulgent chemicals against enemies. Okay. Well, have you ever been there and then have, who has ever been stung by a bee? Me. You enjoyed or you cried? Yeah, that's the experience. <laughs> it was painful. Uh -huh. So that was the mechanism of defend, defending itself from the enemy. Some of yeah. them, you just touch it, the, the legs, the spikes are found on the leg. If you look at the leg of a cockroach, it has those part, parts that pierce, okay? Yeah. Those parts are the ones which do what? Which help it to run, to run away from the enemy. Enemies. So I don't know, are you an enemy or you a friend? We are friends. <laughs> How can you be a friend to a cockroach, my friend? Holy you don't harm it. <laughs> uh, my friend, the day monkeys will cane you, you'll know, you know that they are not your friends. Okay, <laughs> let us have the next one. Number two, after looking at insects, we have another type of pests. And here we have the nematodes. These are legless, tubular, with round unsegmented bodies. The parasitic nematodes have stylets for piercing and sucking of plant sap. An example, we have the leeworms, okay? They are similar to earthworms. Have you seen earthworms? Yes. They are similar to earthworms. They are able to, they are able to destroy our crops. For example, the bananas. You plant your mato, okay? The caffeine goes inside there to bring a disease. Because after destroying it for you not enjoy. The next one is the rodents. We have the squirrels, rats, and then field mice. Okay? Yeah. For them, these ones are very deadly. Why? Because they have specialized teeth for gnawing, crushing, and can also grind the hard material. Okay? Some of you, you have ever practiced to be rats? <laughs> yes, in your dormitory. You, after VD, when you are crushing your things, hard things there in the dome. So that is the similar way how these rodents do what? Destroy our crops. Yeah. They destroy crops such as the grains. Do you know grains? Yes. You give an example of a grain. Rice. Rice. We have millet, sorghum. Maize. 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 And then here, number four, we have buds. These mainly eat our crops. Examples we have the quella buds. These birds you are seeing here, 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 here. Are you seeing some birds here? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. Those birds have done us more harm than food. They make a lot of noise as they are eating our robes. <coughs> so let's, let's think. Let me first organize and we see. So we had finished the birds. Now here we have the number number six mites. We have the mites. If you look at our first page, you it, it, I you see I think here. These yes. red things here. These ones are mm. called mites. These are mites. Okay. okay. These are the mites. We are, descri we are describing and we are talking about. And then this is a locust. Locusts are different from grasshopper. Yes. Are these edible too? No. I, I hear some people eat them. You just, you just hear, but the dead will cook for you. You'll, you'll believe. <laughs> they are not edible to some regions, okay? But some people consume them mm -hmm. okay so now let's continue we are talking about mites mites they lack wings they attack citrus fruits tea cotton okay citrus simply means the orange trees eh? orange lemon when somebody talks about citrus yes those are the things we are talking about. Tea, cotton. When mites attack crops, the leaves turn yellow and later fall off. They sometimes also cause diseases to our crops. That's the disadvantage of those pests. And then there we have bacteria. Can you believe that even bacteria is a pest? Hello? How is it a pest? Bacteria, bacteria attacks crops and causes a disease. Okay, diseases such as banana wilt, banana mm. bacteria wilt. Okay, yeah. because in our definition we say it is any living organism which destroys our crops. So a bacteria destroys our crops. Okay, that's why we classify it under. A pest. So the next one we have viruses. Malcolm, read for us what does a virus do? These are tiny and only capable of living when inside living tissues or hosts, like cassava mosaic, groundnuts, rosette. Yes. Viruses, just as today. You, you are hearing about, or you have known about coronavirus, but that one doesn't affect our crops. We have other viruses which attack crops and they cause diseases. In your biology, you have covered a virus as being tiny living organisms which only can survive inside the tissues of a host. A host simply means either a person, a plant, anything where it can survive from that because that place is able to provide it all the necessary conditions for its survival. A virus cannot survive on a bare land. You cannot find it on the road. Okay? Because after some time, it will lack the necessities for survival. And these viruses can cause diseases, diseases to our crops, such as the cassava mosaic. When we reach that part of studying about diseases, we shall see how cassava mosaic looks like, and then we shall look at how granite rosette also looks like. And then number eight, and our, it is our last pest. Here we have the fungi. They are either parasitic or saprophytic, meaning they survive on others, or they have, they have the potential 
to survive on the decaying matter. Is that okay to everyone? Yes. All right. Is there anything you'd love to know that you have not understood as far as what we have covered for now? No. no. Everything is clear? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right. That's great. So let us look at damages caused by these organisms. Okay. Is there any damage you know of? Hello, hello. Any, what? any damage yeah. which can easily be caused by these organisms, the dangerous space. Any damage? Any damage? Yes. Uh -huh. Tell us one, Shania. Like bean weevils, they create holes and it can prevent the beans from, from germinating. All right. Malcolm, any? Um, some destroy roots. Mm -hmm. Stems. Very good. So now, do you know what you have said? They have asked, you have answered the question which says, what are the effects of pests on crops? Hello? Yeah. Yes, you have answered the question which says, what are the effects of pests on crops? Not what are the damages caused by pests on crops? Are those things the same? No. No. All right, so here we are looking at the first one which says, they destroy seeds, hence interfering with germination. If our seeds are destroyed, there's no way they can germinate. Look at a scenario whereby you are a farmer, you go and buy your planting material, the seeds, you plant them, and then from nowhere the birds come and eat everything like the chicken. The chicken can eat all the seeds if you have planted simsim, if you have planted the sorghum, millet, it can go and eat up each and, ev each and everything from the garden. You just get annoyed. I don't know what solution you'd provide for that hen, apart from the knife. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let us have the next point. It says they reduce seed production by attacking the flowers. Just, just, just like how we had covered before, before there in some page, which where we are talking about these flowers being very vital and essential. Once the flowers are destroyed, there's no we can find seeds. Then the next point says, Malcolm, read for us the next point. The eternal inside crops and interfere with transport and nutrient absorption. Yes, but you have skipped one point. Oh, oh, sorry. They destroy growing parts and cause deserted growth of crops. Okay. Here, if if they destroy the growing parts, uh, do you know, have you grown parts of a, a flower plant, a flowering plant? Yes. In which class? I think in P4. Even second. In senior two, term one, yes. you studied in biology. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Uh -huh. can, can somebody locate where the axaria, axaria, axaria roots are found? Hello, hello. Yes. Can we find, can somebody locate where the growing parts are found? If this plant is just emerging out of the soil and is maturing, there are some parts which are very essential. For example, if you look at a banana when it is growing, okay, have you ever seen a banana growing? Yes. Yes. That is very good. When a banana is growing, it first introduces the first leaf, okay? And that leaf moves, it grows. But if that leaf is destroyed, that is the end of the story. The growth life cycle is distorted, meaning it will take long to grow. That's what we call standard growth, okay? Shania, read for us the next point. 
They tunnel inside crops and interfere with transport and nutrient absorption. Very good. If you look at a maize plant growing, a maize plant has the shoot system and the root system. The shoot is the leaves and the flowers and the rest. And then the root is where we find the root in, in beneath the soil. If we destroy the soil from the middle part, in between the shoot and the root, we are going to disconnect the movement of plant nutrients and water. Okay? The water will not be able to move from the ground up to the leaves. That alone can lead to poor growth and distorted growth, stunted growth of the plant. You plant maize, you expect to enjoy the fruits of the maize after three months. You are waiting for five months just because of that mistake, that effect of the pest. That's why we need to control these pests while they are in the garden. The next point says, they eat leaves, hence reducing the rate of photosynthesis. Like Just like this one here, you are seeing here at the extreme corner on your right. Are you seeing it? Hello, hello. Yes. Yes. This one here. It can destroy the leaf. Once it destroys the leaf, it means that you are not going to harvest anything because this leaf is important in formulation of food. It is the green part which attracts the sun, the sunlight, and it has the platelets and the chlorophyll. So, uh, sorry, it has the chlorophyll for photosynthesis to take place. Okay, if it is destroyed, it means that we are going to be having a loss. So we need to control these guys properly. And then there we have the last point, which says. They eat leaves, hence reducing it. We have finished that one. And then you see this gentleman here, here, this at the extreme lower part here. Is everybody seeing seeing the maize weevil? Yes. Yes. This is the maize weevil. If you have not eaten a maize weevil and you have been enjoying bean weevils. <laughs> so this one is a brother to the other one or a sister. Okay. Here we still have other effects, another other effects and damages caused by the pests. Malcolm, read for us the first one. The biting yes. pests attack roots, hence reducing water and nutrient absorption. Very good. Biting pests attack roots, hence reducing water and nutrient absorption. The rats enter into the soil. Okay. When the rats are in the soil and the squirrels, they will eat up all the storage stored food in the root crops, such as the cassava, the sweet potatoes, the Irish potatoes, because they store their food in the roots, which leads to standard growth. Next, read for Ashania. Hello, hello. They, yes. Read for they us. Remove, they remove stored food in tubers, cones, and other storage structures like the rats. Uh -huh. That is just what I, I'd explain <laughs> there that they remove stored food from the tubers, okay, like the cones. Do you know cones? Hello. Yes. Okay. Can you give us an example of a cone? Yes. An example of a cone? Maize. Pardon? A, a cone. Maize. And then a, maize? Maize is not a cone. Not a cone. Huh? Maize is not a cone. We have tubers. Do you know yams? Yes. Are yams cones or tubers? Tubers. Tubers. 
Yeah, two bars. Yes. So what yeah. happens? Maybe. What happens? Very good. That will be our homework. You, sh- you will go and make research about that. I'll, it will be the first question I'll ask you the next time we meet. Is that well? Okay. Yes. You can make some research and then you look for findings and then you will tell us, you will present to us what you have been able to discover. You can dif- differentiate between tubers and cones. Maybe I, I guide you when you are, re- when you are researching. Uh, go to go and study about to vegetative as vegetative propagation, okay? Yeah. Asexual, asexual, asexual and sexual propagation. You will find details there, and you will present to us. So our next point says the sucking, the suckling pests remove plant sap and cause loss in plant vigor, like the aphids. Aphids are very small insects. We are going to see them in the next page. Their work is only to remove the water, the sap from the plant, which makes, just like you, if, if you have uh, baby bugs and they are busy enjoying your blood, you cannot remain the same. Okay? You can't remain the same. You will become malnourished. If you look at the cow and the cow has ticks, the ticks are enjoying from it. A cow becomes irritated. That is similar to the crops. As long as the pests are there, it will not be able to germinate properly. Shania, read for us the next point. They inject saliva, which is toxic to plants. Yes, it's a saliva. It is very toxic. It carries germs, pathogens, okay? It carries pathogens which are able to transmit a disease into our crops. So we have to control these pests as long as we see them in our gardens. Malcolm, read for us the next point. They, they cause crop loss by contaminating products with waste and hence poor quality output. Yes. These guys, once you keep your produce in a store, they will go and urinate there. They go and defecate. Okay. By the time you remove your produce to take to the, to the market, the price will be very low. They tell you, you guy, what have you brought? You, you, you have brought maize, it is even having feces of, of the rat. They will give you, at, they will pay you very little amount of money. Okay, That means that these pests have the potential to lower, to lower our quality of the produce. And then the other point says, pests increase the cost of production because their control is expensive. How much do you think a pesticide costs? Hello? I'm not really sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yes? On average, on average, if you have an acre of land and you have planted your maize, you have planted your maize and you need to control these guys, the pests, you may spend like 150, 150,000 to 200,000 just buying the chemicals to spray. Remember, you have not even put in the, 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 the budget for labor. The person you are going to use at the end of the day, you'll find that you'll be making losses. If you spend like 200,000 on maize, at the end of the day, you get very few kilograms. And they tell you a kilogram is only 300 shillings. Okay? It means that you have incurred a lot of costs. At the end of the day, after selling, you are getting nothing. If to uh, me, I just run away from digging and then I give up. But serious farmers never give up. 
Okay, let uh, come with someone read for us the last point. Arco. First, transmit disease causing organisms like fungi and bacteria. Yes. And that oh. is the last point. It has the potential to transmit diseases. The pests such as the locusts, aphids, grasshopper, for them, they, they, do, they are able to spread, okay, from one place to another, one plant to another. But these organisms, the fungi and bacteria are able to transmit and even cause, okay, they are able to cause a, a disease. Is that well? Yes. yes. All right. Is everything okay? As far as yeah. what we have covered? Yep. yep. Okay. If everything is okay, here we have an assignment which we need you, which I need you to tackle. Is there anything that is we have not that we have not covered? Amongst what we have, what amongst uh, these questions on our screen? No. No. Yes. No. No. We have covered everything there. Are you Are you sure? Yes, everything. Okay. If everything is clear, Malcolm, can you define us? Number five, do give us an answer for number five. Malcolm, we are waiting. Malcolm, Malcolm, are you there? No, he's not. Oh, Shania, you can try. Well, polyphagous pests feed on a variety of, of, of crops, while monophagous pests feed on one specific type of crop. That is very good. You have been attentive. That is very good. Thanks for that good answer. So, well. all right, Malcolm, Malcolm, are you there? Is yes. Malcolm You have went at Kamol? No. Okay, if you are not in Kamol, you, you give us at least attempt number four, Roman one. At least three examples. Is Malcolm with us? Hello. For biting Hello. pests and chewing pests, I can give um grasshoppers. Yes, uh huh. Grasshoppers. Termites. Yes. Termites. Yes. Um, cat caterpillars. Yes. Uh, locusts. Yes. Yeah. That is very good. Thanks so much. That is very, very good. That shows yeah. that you have been attentive and you have been in class. Yes. All right. So I expect you to attempt this assignment uh, and forward it in, the pla in your class platform is where I'll find it. Is it well? Okay. Is there anything that we have not understood properly such that we can redigest? No. No. Yes. Everything is okay. Yeah. Yes. So here we have the caterpillars. Are you seeing them? Yes. Yes. So I would expect you to attempt this assignment. And the last last number is also very very essential. 
least 10 examples of pests you have ever seen in your school garden. Have you ever seen any? We don't have a school garden. A garden? Have you seen any? Apart from your school garden? Yeah, okay, yeah, I've ever. An example? Squirrel. You have seen a squirrel in your school garden or somewhere else? No, like a uh, normal garden, not school garden. Yeah. Yeah. That is very good. Yeah. All right, thanks so much. You're welcome. If there isn't anything else, is there anything else? No. Nope. All right, I think our lesson for today has ended. Has ended. Maybe I take you through this. I think this caterpillar also here. Yeah. Hello. Yes. This is a caterpillar. And then this is the American borrower. Yes. I mean, sorry, this is the cotton stainer. Eh? This one here, are you seeing where the cursor is? Yeah. Yes. This is the cotton stainer. For its work is only to absorb the nutrients from the flower of cotton. So okay. after there, we have let us first go back and then we be able. Are you seeing the effect of the the, the caterpillar on maize? Oh. I've ever bought yep. maize by the time you open inside. You, you have a lot of appetite, and then yeah. you open, and then the guy just smiles at you. <laughs> okay, so this is a gentleman, yeah. a Mr. Caterpillar, hiding inside our um, maze. Yeah. So, this one we have seen. Uh, I want to show you, I want to show you a feed. This is an aphid. This one here is a field pest, okay? It attacks crops while they are still in the garden. You never see it in the store because the condition inside the store does not favor its survival. Is that well? Yeah. Yes. So I think that's all for today. We shall meet next time. May the Almighty God bless you and have a good evening. Same to you. Okay, goodbye. Bye.